Now, you may be tempted to skip over this episode, which is mostly about the theory of filmmaking, but I suggest you stick with me for just a few more minutes. Some of the hard-won knowledge provided here may really help you further down the line, not just with storytelling, but also the whole look and feel of your production. I know what it's like to just want to forge ahead and start making something. Oh, trust me, I know. But take the time to lay a little groundwork before you get started, and you may thank yourself later. And if, like myself, you come from a filmmaking background already, you may be surprised to learn how many of your existing skills translate neatly across to the digital world. There are a few things to keep in mind right from the get-go. You may have this epic scene in your head with hundreds of assets, hundreds of extras, spaceships flying overhead, dinosaurs driving tanks, Avengers in-game levels of epicness, and oh look, your graphics card just exploded. That's not to say that these things aren't possible, but let's just say they will be limited not only by your imagination, but also your hardware. Unreal is an amazing piece of software, but it's also very intensive. I'm running the specs listed on the screen at the moment, and I still get the occasional slowdown, especially in my more ambitious scenes. Not only that, but the average Unreal project file takes up a lot of space, with 30 gigabytes being on the small side. The more assets you pack into those scenes, the bigger those files are going to get. Look, I get it. I come from a filmmaking background. Give a director access to an almost infinite variety of locations, costumes, props, vehicles, and lighting setups, and they're going to want to use them all. That's where we have to learn the concept of expense. Now, when I say expense, I don't mean a monetary cost, although you can certainly pay a lot for assets, and a lot of them are free. In this sense, expense is about how much drain any particular asset or collection of assets is putting on your system. Some types of lights, for example, are very cheap and system friendly. Others are very expensive and will put more of a drain on your graphics card. Some assets like stylized scenery or props have a very low number of polygons that make them up and they're cheap. Others, such as hair grooms with built-in physics, are expensive and may slow down or even crash the program. Yes, get used to this window. This happens a lot. Learning the difference between cheap and expensive assets is a very useful skill. It becomes a balancing act of your computer's budget between appearance and performance, but I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with what you can get away with. Think of Unreal Engine as your own personal film studio. But like any film studio, when you first walk in the door, it's dark and the stage is bare. It's up to you to move everything in, but first you have to decide exactly what kind of film you want to make. The good news is, it's your studio, and like a digital Stanley Kubrick, you can take as long as you want. You may be watching this lesson and have a pretty good idea of what you want to make, and you're impatiently waiting for me to get to the good stuff. But first, ask yourself some questions. How long is my production? How many cast members does it have? How many locations does it have? Is there dialogue or is it silent? If there is dialogue, is there on-screen lip sync? And finally, what do I want it to look like? When I first started playing with Unreal, I had so many ideas for what I wanted to make with it, and I still do. But I was quickly struck with the practicalities of creating those ideas. For example, every cast member that you create for your production represents an investment of hours of work, even with labor-saving software such as Character Creator. If your production is more complicated than two people talking in a room, then that's more time you need to allow for. If you have multiple locations, then you need to build every single one of those, or buy pre-built location packs. On a good day, when I'm working on a short, I can knock off between two to four shots, maybe 10 to 15 seconds of a finished production. And that's just if it's two characters talking. Moving around, fighting, or interacting with the environment all takes longer to build and get looking right. And if they are talking, do we see them talk? Or are they wearing helmets? <coughs> On-screen lip sync is hard and I'm still very much getting the hang of it. Did I get it right, old boy? Spot on, old chap. This is in no way intended to discourage anyone from being as ambitious as they want to be. I just want you to go into any production pre-armed with the knowledge of exactly what's involved, rather than becoming overwhelmed and discouraged at a later date. Because trust me, I've been there. I spent my first few weeks, even months on Unreal, basically just playing. Testing lighting setups, importing characters, moving them around in locations, moving the camera around them, framing and rendering shots, etc. 
I highly encourage you to do the same. On top of everything else, Unreal is just a fun piece of software to use, and it's absolutely okay for just to play with it for a while. This should be an enjoyable, freeing experience for you. And the lessons that you learn while playing will definitely help you to improve your planned production when you feel you're ready to move to that stage. Let's get out of here. My first fully animated short was First Day, the story of a stormtrooper's first day on the job. I chose this idea for a few different reasons. Number one, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Number two, I just discovered the range of free animations available from Mixamo.com and my mind started to build a story around them. Number three, you can't see Stormtroopers' faces, and I hadn't figured out lip sync yet. And so, First Day was born, after only using Unreal for a couple of months. I don't say this to brag, but to emphasize how streamlined and, dare I say, simple the process became after I'd figured out the basics. Hopefully you will get to that point even sooner. Even so, apart from lip sync, I also hadn't figured out how to edit or customize animations from within Unreal, so I had to write the story entirely around the movements that were available from Mixamo.com and time the dialogue to them. It was kind of a backwards way of working, but that was the limit of my knowledge at the time, and that's where the whatever works spirit of filmmaking kicks in. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And so, the takeaways from this lesson. Figure out what you want to make. Write a proper script, and from that script, do a breakdown of characters, locations, of props. Do a rough estimate of how long your film may be. A good rule of thumb is about a minute per page of properly formatted script. Then, allow for the fact that you can maybe complete 10 seconds of footage on a really good day, and two to three seconds on any other day. This is assuming you are creating your productions initially as a hobby, maybe around a full-time job. Once again, special effects, action scenes, complicated scenes with multiple characters interacting will all take longer. <laughs> and that doesn't even allow for the days when Unreal doesn't want to play ball and crashes a lot. Which, I want to emphasize again, will happen. Do you want your films to be super realistic, AAA studio quality? Metahumans by Epic Games are absolutely incredible, and also absolutely free. But in terms of cost to your system, they can be super expensive. And it can be tricky to get results with them that don't fall deep into the uncanny valley. Have a look at my first attempt. Toonish, or stylized characters, are also an option, which are less expensive for the system, but can be hard to design from scratch. This is where the playing comes in. Experiment for as long as you need before you find a look you're happy with. Do as much prep as you can, then move on to the next step.